These mighty trees grow in the jungle of Ecuador. Their crowns are the only plant parts exposed to full sunlight. All the shorter trees underneath them, all the lianas and vines, and even more so the plants growing close to the ground, have to compete for stray sun rays or the diffuse light that is filtering down. Without light, there is no photosynthesis. There is an eternal race going on between the forest plants, the trees that grow higher, the lianas that grow faster, the ground dwellers that are more effective in using the residual light, will win. This multi-storied world of a thousand shades of green is full of competition, of the proverbial survival of the fittest. The plants fight for sunlight, for water and for nutrients. The prize, as always in nature, is to proliferate, to get more of their genes into the gene pool of the next generation. The biomass that plants grow is the base of most food chains. The herbs, the fruits or the leaves that are produced are eaten by specialised herbivores, frugivores or folivores. The wood of the trees is harder to consume but there are plenty of xylophagous beetles, termites or fungi. Plants develop traits to deter hungry mouths and mandibles and herbivores adapt to deal with the plant's defences. Mechanic obstacles against predation such as spines, wax or hairs are just a first line of defence. The real adaptive struggle rages at the chemical level. Plants and herbivores are engaged in a chemical arms race. The consumption of plants by herbivores has driven the evolution of diverse plant defence chemicals. Herbivores have constantly adapted to the plant chemicals, thereby triggering the production of different chemicals by the plants. This in turn is leading to new adaptations by herbivores and so on. The race never ends. Plants emit an extraordinary diversity of chemicals that provide information about their identity and mediate their interactions with insects, fungi and vertebrates. An interesting third line of plant defence against predation are mutualistic relationships with animals based on long coevolution. Acacia ants live within hollow thorns of the acacia tree and feed at special nectaries at the base of its leaves. In exchange for this food and shelter, the acacia ants will vigorously defend their host tree from herbivores. Ceba trees have a mutualistic relationship with root duendes. The phagophilic duendes eat root ectoparasites, such as grubs or large nematodes. In return, the ceba trees provide the duendes with special protective root chambers. In the following episode, we will look at higher levels of the food chains, especially at the relationship between herbivores and carnivores. Stay tuned and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.